Hello. Oh, hello. I'm Aisha Stevens and emotions are great. I can go from the hot anger of forgetting I had tea to the pure joy of eating a grilled cheese to the complete and inevitable despair I feel when I listen to the Euphoria soundtrack by Labyrinth, all within the space of an hour. Today I'm going to show you how to give your characters that same emotional whiplash. And while I have your attention, I'd like to say that I hope you've been doing your part to help support the Black Lives Matter movement and um, that I have my commissions open, 70% of which will be split and donated to the Philadelphia Bail Fund and Black Minds Matter UK. There's more details on my Instagram at Art of Aisha. DM me on there and let's talk about commissions. Also, I have made a learning resource on Bell Hooks and her work on race and the media. So that's on my main account at Aisha Stevens if you want to have a read. It's quite interesting um, and a few people have found it helpful. So hope it helps you. And of course, there will be links below on more ways you can help because this topic doesn't go away once it stops trending. So keep spreading the word and learning and helping. Now, art is a way of expressing your emotions. That's why some people call it vent art, because when you look at people's art, you can often see what they were feeling at the time. This is therapeutic, I would say, a bit like journaling, except you don't have to do so much writing. So that's a bonus. Using these emotions to make something can be therapeutic and often put whatever you're feeling into perspective. So. There's a lot of bonuses to learning how to properly put emotion into a piece. And while I was doing research yesterday, um, I found this, Robert Pluchik, Robert Pluchik's Wheel of Emotions. I hope I pronounced that right. I did look around for pronunciation, but pronunciation, pronunciation, but um, Robert Pluchik is how I think you say it. And I feel like this is a good model to base things off of. Obviously you have reference sheets. Here's one I used to use all the time in secondary school. Anyway, yes, I really like this wheel. I haven't read a lot into it, but I have an understanding of it. And I just like funky diagrams, so it appeals to me. And I didn't do psychology in secondary school, but a lot of my friends did, so I like to pretend that I have the knowledge. On top of references, you can also use photos of yourself because they might be more accessible. Um, or you can look in a mirror and make the face every time you look in like this. Well, or not like that because that's scary. The main thing I use when drawing emotions in my work is the levels, the idea of intensity and like the levels of intensity. You can see this intensity demonstrated in the wheel as well. So if we take the key emotion of anger, which is one of the eight key emotions that Pluchik says exist, you see anger is like a medium red. And then on one side of it is annoyance, which is a faded red. And then on the other side of anger is rage, which is a dark red. So you can see that the intensity goes up a bit. To create the intensity in emotion in my portraits, drawings, characters, whatever, I focus largely on eyebrows and eyes because, you know, um, what's that expression? The eyes are the windows to the soul. So let's take another look at that anger example. The more downturned the eyebrows are towards the nose, the more angry the character looks. And then the more squinted the eyes are, the angrier the character looks, again. Mouths are obviously good for showing emotion because um, that's where all your words come out. And that's also a good giveaway sometimes, apart from the eyes. I do need to practice mouths, however, because that's why a lot of my characters often end up looking like this. Hair is an interesting way to create an emotion. For example, with the fear emotion that I drew, um, I tried to make his hair look a bit on end, like he's like it's standing on end because he's scared. Then with anger, you can make it look spiky, or with sadness, you can make it floppy. I just kissed the mic. Floppy, because it looks mopey and emo. And so on. 
I feel like with noses there's less to be done there however if you scrunch the nose up a bit it might look a bit it suggests disgust that's it however to add levels to your art maybe your character is hiding something hiding an emotion like anger for example in order to do this you have to adapt the expression a bit and kind of like hybridize mix up a few other emotions that the character is using to put on this front so you have to use the face to show aspects of the emotion they're trying to hide for example they're hiding anger um, they might have slightly scrunched eyebrows but the emotion they're using to mask is joy so they might be smiling and with that you have to obviously put most of the face into the expression of joy so that it looks like they're like yeah you get me so the key takeaway is that you have to have aspects of the hidden emotion but most of the face has to show the emotion that they're putting on a bit like this I actually used the wheel yesterday to do an exercise for myself where I took the eight key emotions that um, Pluchik says exist or the eight main ones why do I keep doing that? I tried to draw the eight key emotions that Pluchik says are like the god tier emotions the main ones that we experience because like everyone, I feel like I need practice on emotions. I'm not an expert. I'm just a young adult with a hobby. I know nothing. So taking these emotions, I played with the levels of intensity, um, like with the anger one you saw earlier. I think if you're looking to practice having more expression in your work, this is a really good idea because it's just like, got words to associate with it. It's just really, the wheel is, the wheel, the wheel is so, it's very clever and I like it so. In doing the list of emotions it actually helps with consistency of drawing the same character so that's always good. And I would really recommend doing this as an exercise, it's not homework, it's just a recommendation. Anyway I hope this was helpful, if you have any questions put them down in the comments, I will try to be semi-intelligent in my response. And just a reminder, if you want to commission a portrait from me, be my guest, DM me, um, comment, uh, email me. I would love to hear from you. So stay safe. I love you. Bye. I'll see you next week.